Legendary Queen frontman Freddie Mercury was one of the most dynamic personalities of the 20th century. And we're finally getting a movie about his legendary rock band Queen, but there are a lot of bumps on the way to the big screen. The Freddie Mercury Show if you could choose any actor to take on the role of Freddie Mercury, who would you pick? Johnny Depp, Adam Lambert, how about Sasha Baron Cohen? Nice. For years, the Borat actor was slated to embody the Queen frontman, but creative differences ultimately led him to abandon the project in 2013. According to People, the actor disagreed with Queen's band members on what the film should focus on. Cohen said he wanted the film to be a more raw and real accounting of the singer's complex life. Meanwhile, the surviving band members supposedly wanted Mercury to be a relatively minor figure in the movie, with half of the film focusing on the band carrying on following his death. Everyone has a different story about what happened, but the end result is the same. It looks like we'll never get to see Cohen show off his striking similarities to the late singer. Death and Rebirth when Bohemian Rhapsody lost its first lead actor, it also lost its first screenwriter. According to Peter Morgan, who wrote the first script for the movie, he was commissioned specifically by Baron Cohen to get the movie off the ground. When the actor left the project, Morgan did too, and it seemed like the movie might be done for. Producers disagreed and trudged onward, but Cohen and Morgan weren't the last to abandon ship. Director Dexter Fletcher also left the project in 2014, apparently because he was also hoping for a more grounded story about the life and death of the Queen frontman. He was replaced by X-Men director Brian Singer. Fletcher later told IndieWire that his version of the movie got fairly far into development before he left, and it's prep work that would pay off later when Singer left the production with another major problem. A new star for a while, things seemed like they were coming together. The role of Freddie Mercury ended up landing in the lap of Rami Malek, best known for his work on the series Mr. Robot. Once he landed the role, the actor was determined to get it right on every level – the voice, the charisma, and the look. Freddie Mercury was always self-conscious about his teeth. He had four extra ones in the upper back part of his mouth, which is why he had such an extreme overbite. Though he was always insecure about his smile, he refused to get treatment because he was worried it might somehow damage his singing voice. Experts seemed divided on whether he was right about that, but the result was that those teeth became something he was known for, whether he liked it or not. Malik seemed to think there was something magical about the overbite too. He was so sure about this that he says he carried a set of Freddie Mercury teeth around in a little plastic container. I had the teeth with me, so I w every night I would get home and I would knock those suckers in. He did this even before the film was greenlit. That's dedication. As he later said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, when you put in those teeth, there's a very visceral change to the performance. When I took them out by the end of the film, I felt quite naked. The Muses Muses to embody the physicality of the charismatic Queen singer, Malik did more than just study Mercury himself. He was also coached to review video of the artists who inspired the late singer, such as Jimi Hendrix, Aretha Franklin, David Bowie, and Liza Minnelli, whose performance in the 1972 film Cabaret was one of Mercury's favorites. Malik told the New York Times that watching Minnelli in Cabaret was, quote, almost more useful at times than it was to watch Freddie himself. The surviving members of Queen seemed to think that the studies paid off. Speaking to the New York Times, Brian May confessed, We sometimes forgot he was Romy. About the voice After all that, it would be kind of underwhelming if Malik just lip-synced to old Queen songs. But he did also insist to the New York Times, quote, No one wants to hear me sing. Clearly, some movie magic was necessary to bring Freddie's voice to life through Malik. Here's the problem. Freddie Mercury had one of the most distinctive voices in all of pop music, reportedly possessing a four-octave vocal range. He had abilities that even the most accomplished actor simply could not recreate. Instead, Malik's voice was mixed with Mercury's and also with a third singer's. A Canadian Christian rock singer named Mark Martel, who has a voice that's been described as practically identical to Mercury's. It's a lot of effort to recreate magic that Mercury pulled off all by himself. Another one bites the dust. Toward the end of shooting, director Brian Singer decided to just not come back. Apparently, the shooting of Bohemian Rhapsody was just as messy as its pre-production, with Singer ultimately being fired from the movie after failing to show up for work. He defended himself by saying that he was tending to a sick relative, but insiders told a different tale. According to a report by The Rap, Singer's absence was part of a pattern of showing up late, feuding with Malik, and sometimes not showing up at all. With Singer out of the picture, the production reached out to original director Dexter Fletcher 
to see if he could bring the project across the finish line. Thanks to a Directors Guild of America rule, Singer still gets the movie's only directing credit, even if he didn't necessarily earn it. Despite the production difficulties, it's hard to argue with Malick's committed performance bringing Freddie Mercury back on stage. He's got the strut, the voice, and the look. Did it pay off with a good movie? That's for you to decide. But there's one thing no one can dispute. The movie's soundtrack is just fantastic. That was guaranteed no matter what.